Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me. This is the Old Man Digital World. I'm with you as I take a break from my day job talking about political commentary. I'm about to do a live stream a little bit later today, and it's currently December 12th. And uh, I want to take a moment to look at The Matrix or the second official trailer that has just come out. And to do that, I want to take a look back at what I was talking about in the first official Matrix 4 trailer. You may recall that I was talking about it back in September, and at the time I said the following, and that is that Neo is not the main character. This is not Neo's story. There is, uh, this trailer seems to be somewhat of a bait and switch if I'm noticing things properly. And I'm going to try and show you what I mean. And I think I can point out the two main characters this really is about. And that was the big thing that I had to say at the time. In looking at the trailer and going over it in some detail, we were getting a bait and switch. We were being pushed this idea that Neo is back. And this is a continuation of Neo's story. But it's not. And I think I made that case pretty clear. But a lot of people were very, very excited about the original Matrix trailer, which I understand completely. It was a great trailer. But what about the new Matrix trailer, which we see? This is the official uh, trailer, official Matrix 2. It's been out since December 6th, and there's about 10 million people who have watched it. It's popular. Of course, the Matrix series is popular. But is it the story that we're being told? Is this about Neo? Because I can tell you it isn't. And I don't think the second, and I, rather I should say, I think the second trailer tells us not only is this story not about Neo, it's about politics, it's about progressive ideology at the forefront when there's always been philosophy, there's always been politics in all of the Matrix movies. But I think this time round, that is the purpose of this movie. It's about ideology, really stylized, really well packaged. But this is about political ideology and political messaging in a different. And, and by the way, that's what I do for a living. I do political commentary. So I may be reading more into this than you are. Maybe I'm getting it wrong. And I'd love to hear what you think about it. But not only is it more political blatantly political, but also I think it's less interesting. Just the storyline we're seeing by itself. I think the second trailer really shows us how much of a disappointment we're about to be seeing on, on December 22nd. So let's look at the second trailer and let's see if I was right. Is this movie about um, Trinity? Is this movie about blue haired chick? who's going to be absolutely non-binary, if not trans. Is, is that what this story really is about? Or is it about Neo and the continuation of his story organically? Let's take a look. We can't see it. But we're all trapped inside these strange repeating loops. Billions of people. So... The first thing that we have to take away from this trailer, and I think it's very important, this is nostalgia bait. We are being nostalgia baited right there. You remember the first movie and how groundbreaking it was? Do you remember uh, all the scenes from the other movies? They were great, weren't they? You remember that greatness. <clears throat> that was something that really captured you, and you wanted to be involved in that. It was a wonderful emotion. Don't you feel that again? And we get shown Neo, but really, we're not being shown Neo, we're being shown Trinity. They're telling us, our main character, the person we're following, the story this is about, isn't Neo, it's Trinity. They've made it very clear in just the first 13 seconds. But let's keep going. Just living out their lives, oblivious. So if you didn't catch it, <laughs> they want to make it absolutely clear. Oh, so you know what's going on. This is the new character representing Agent Smith. 
We, they redid Hugo Weaving's character. They redid this for you. And now, that's Agent Smith. This is the machine. This is the agent. This is our, protagon uh, our, our antagonist in this uh, playthrough. We weren't sure who he was in the first trailer. Now they have made it absolutely clear. They have given us a reveal that I honestly think they should have kept until the movie actually came out. They should not have told us. We weren't sure exactly where he played in here. We were pretty sure he was part of the machines. He was part of the system. But we didn't know what role he actually played. Now we blatantly, absolutely, without question, in this trailer have been told he's Agent Smith. They lost a big reveal. And it takes away from the whole movie. And it also instantly makes us say, well, I loved Agent Smith. Do I love this guy? Should I love this guy? Again, nostalgia bait. You love Smith. You should love this guy too. But should we? Really? Is he as compelling? Is he as interesting? It opens a question. It gives doubt. <clears throat> but this is the moment for you to show us what is real. So, did you see in that last series, we saw a couple more things that were very interesting. Uh, obviously, there's the nostalgia bait. Yet again, more nostalgia bait. You remember the mirror. You remember how important that was. You got to remember that this is a transition. Mirrors are important. It's a window to the soul. It's telling us something about what's deeper. Even as we're getting shown scenes about the other movies, the other scenes that were iconic, and this is yet another iconic scene. Again, this is the trailer giving us nostalgia bait to say, you want to see this. You want to see this story. And they keep showing us Keanu in these iconic moments saying, you want to see Keanu go through these moments again. But then they're also telling us that, no, this is really about Trinity. Trinity is the action star. Trinity is the person with agency in this movie. She's the one that we need to pay attention to. She's always been the person you should have been paying attention to. She's always been the star, subverting our views, not only of the Matrix, but also of what the original stories were about to tell us. And of course, we have Keanu Reeves, and I believe this is the agent, uh, the, agent the new version of Agent Smith, who now has him subdued, has him in a position of vulnerability. He's going to die. He's in danger. He's weak. He needs the support of, well, the true heroes of this movie, which are going to be Trinity and blue-haired chick, or blue-haired non-binary, or blue-haired trans. That's your person with agency in this movie. This is the real hero of the movie. This is the person you're supposed to be rooting for. This is the person who's going to deliver all of the major action to you. And I don't think that's necessarily a compelling character. And I don't really care that the character is non-binary or trans because that's meaningless. It's like saying, well, women have to be action heroes. No, they don't. Sometimes they are. Ellen Ripley is a fantastic action hero. Uh, looking at Terminator 2, uh, Terminator, the entire Terminator series. Sarah Connor, she's a wonderful action hero. Vasquez in Aliens 2, that's a fantastic character. Action, perfect. They didn't have to be women to do that. They were women and they were doing that. And that made them, they were just great characters. I didn't need to know about their gender or their sexual preference to make them better or worse. That's unnecessary. Now, this character, blue-haired chick, I don't know. I, I, I'm not compelled by what I see about this character, especially as I see what this, this character is being surrounded by, what we're being told we should feel about this character as we watch the trailers. Let me continue. I remember this. We all do. Again, more nostalgia bait. This is a heavily laden nostalgia bait. 
while the first trailer uh, told us, gave us this new world and told us it's kind of like what we thought it was. It's kind of like our world. It's kind of like the Matrix that we knew, but it's not. And there's a lot of things that have changed and the story has changed. But this movie's, this trailer, the second trailer is telling us nostalgia, nostalgia. Remember that feeling. Remember those iconic moments. We're going to bring them back, but we're going to change them. They're, you don't remember it the right way. We're going to remember this the right way for you. We're going to be putting you on the right track, which involves a lot of politics and political ideology. Okay, let's continue. So deja vu. And yet it's obviously all wrong. Maybe this isn't the story we think it is. And there it is. Maybe it's not the story we think it is. Blue chick, non-binary, trans. Oh, this isn't what you think it is. You never understood the real story, the real meaning, the real issues. It's something different. Now, oh, aren't you interested? No, not really. I like the story like it was. I don't need a new story. I don't need to be retold that story. I don't need to be told that what I thought was the story and how that story went is wrong. And to be retaught, to relearn, to have new feelings implanted on this story. That doesn't mean this can't be a good story in and of itself. But I don't like, and it doesn't seem to me to be a good sign when we're being told, oh, you have to reimagine. By the way, this is the new version, I believe, of Joe Pant uh, Pantagliano um, Cypher. This is the new Cypher, a black man, it seems. Could be wrong. Uh, but we have to have that multi-diversity, uh, that multinational appearance. So we have to have a prominent black side character. We have to have an Asian or um, we need minorities more up front because of diversity quotas. Is it intrinsic to the characters? Not necessarily. Do I care particularly? No, not necessarily. That doesn't make them a better or worse character. It just throws in something. But when I see the politics that are being layered on in here on so many levels, then it stands out to me. And actually, it makes me feel in a negative way. It, it takes away. Were they the best actors or were they the best um, check the box kind of characters fit this? Were they really the best for the role or were they the best person to check the boxes to get the message across that's being push, pushed out to us? Let's go on. They taught you good. Made you believe their world was all you deserved. Some part so Neo is a failure. Neo, Neo has failed in, in his goal to change the matrix. He is being used. He is a tool. He, is, he has to be taught. He has to be taught by Morpheus. He has to be taught by Blue Hair Chick. He has to be taught by everyone that he is wrong. And to re-understand his role, his role is not to be the one. His role is not to be the leader. His role is to be the support for the true heroes in this story. And by the way, it's very interesting that there's so many women. They're showing all the women that are just clamoring for Neo because he has been seduced. And because he was so weak, he could be seduced by women and wealth and glamour. He's such a weak character. And we need Blue Hair Chick and we need Trinity to wake him up to the fact that those aren't important things. There's a lot of messaging here. Part of you knew that was a lie. Some part of you remembered what was real. It's so easy to forget how much noise the Matrix pumps into your head. Something else makes the same kind of noise. Again, who's our true action star? Who's the one motivating everything in all of the action scenes? Who's our critical person with agency? Blue hair chick. Miss, Mr. or Mrs. Non-binary. This 
trans, potentially trans character. This is our hero. This is our, a, our action agency. This is the person we're supposed to focus on and we're supposed to love them. Look at the cool things they do and they are so much cooler than what everyone else is doing. Don't you love that character? You must love that character. And it's the push of this that actually makes me less interested in this character. The way that they're messaging this, and this is a big message trailer, it's taking away from my potential enjoyment for, because I can see it's so obvious. I mean, great. The Matrix is great because, yes, there was a lot of messages. There was a lot of philosophy and there were a lot of politics in it, but they weren't in your face. There was a story. It had a good message. It had a good storyline. We could all follow it and we could enjoy it for what it was. This is a bunch of layers of politics. First, the story, it appears second. And that takes away from my appreciation and enjoyment of this. You may feel differently. War. By the way, was that Niobe? Just wondering, was that Niobe? Miss War? Where is that? I want to see if I can get that. Is that Niobe? Did Niobe survive? To change in the matrix and this is what she became i'm not sure could be wrong could be an entirely different character or is this is this the new version of the oracle uh, could be could be but i'm not sure that that's exactly who that is but i am interested in wondering i think it's niobe again we just saw our hero and I believe that blue hair chick, non-binary trans blue hair chick, is a stand-in for the director, Lana Wachowski. That this is their self-insert into the story. That this is representing them. This is their superhero uh, fan fiction. And we all get to enjoy it with them. Because we keep seeing, this is what blue hair chick is supposed to be about. Or... I believe it's blue hair trick, could be blue haired guy, could be non-binary, whatever they want to label it as. But this is the insert for the director, I believe. What happens to Nia? Mr. And again, we get the wonderful, this is our new Agent Smith. Aren't you impressed? Don't you remember the fight in the rain? Don't you remember him calling Mr. Anderson every single time? Don't you remember? Don't you get that feeling? No, I don't. And if you prepare to be subverted, the action isn't going to be in the hero that you think. The, uh, the antagonism isn't going to be necessarily where you think it's going to be. And you should be having flashbacks of feelings that you had in an entirely different movie for this movie. The most important choice in Neo's life is not his to make. Remember, he's not the hero. She is. This is about Trinity. It has always been about Trinity. You just didn't know it. She's the hero. He, she's the one who's going to save everyone. She's the character, which is fine if the story moves in that direction. But don't artificially make it about the politics that it, she has to be there because of diversity quotas, that she has to be the one because of progressive politics. That doesn't work for me. That doesn't excite me for the story. That doesn't make it good. I could be wrong. Maybe they intrinsically make this work. I don't know that they are making it work. The trailer isn't selling me on that. She believed in me. And, you know, I am really disappointed they have massively nerfed uh, Neo. His powers are useless. Do you see what he's doing here? He has a force bubble. This is like a Jedi push. He has the Jedi powers. He can push things. And he makes some things explode. 
fantastic. And it's a really big, powerful push. I mean, look at the building. He's warping things around him. But that's about it. He's not showing us the, the powers and the capabilities that he had before. He's not as strong as before. He's not as, uh, he doesn't have as much agency as he had before. Yes, he's powerful. Yes, he can do things that others can't. But yet, it doesn't feel important. He doesn't feel powerful. His agency seems to be diminished. It's my turn to believe in her. And in fact, look at what we're seeing. The agency, the power of Trinity is being emphasized. We are seeing her power. She's the one. It's girl power on a maximum scale. It's non-binary power on a maximum scale. It's not Neo. He's not the one with the agency. He's not the one with the power. He, it's not his story. We're selling it on his story. We're selling it on the emotion that we had from his story. But it's not about him. You're being subverted because of a political message. And I don't know that the story really supports that. If it does, that's fantastic. But that's not what the trailer is selling. Part of me feels like I have been waiting my whole life for you. Again, all he has is this force push power. Yes, it makes things blow up. It disrupts the Matrix, but he doesn't really seem to have any other power. He doesn't seem to be capable of doing anything else. And honestly, it's kind of boring. Now, I've watched the trailer about five times. So I've seen this over and over. And each time I'm underwhelmed by his use of his powers because they seem so limited. There's so little he seems capable of actually doing. It's unimpressive. If you want to see Trinity again. And again, it's that force push. Always the same thing. Force push, force push. And notice how limited the scenes are where he's actually doing anything. We've seen this rooftop scene before. This is the moment right before, and it looks like the camera switches angles, and then he blows up that helicopter. We saw that scene before. We've seen him being surrounded by people, and he just pushes them off, just like he did with uh, uh, Morpheus, the new version of Morpheus. He's using the same power over and over again. He's not showing us anything really different. Even with that punch with that we just saw, where he punched uh, right here, when he's punching with Smith, what are we seeing? That same force push. Is he able to jump a little higher than normal? Okay. But we're not seeing anything stellar. We're not seeing the exceptional agency and power of this action hero in this world. That's nerfed. I don't know that I feel better about that. That doesn't make me feel excited about this story, especially since they're trying to use the nostalgia of the old movie and the old abilities and powers and capabilities and potential that Neo had. And they're nerfing that. And I don't necessarily feel like I have the same emotion towards this version of Neo as the last one. And now you're emotionally pulled in. You feel for Trinity. You worry for Trinity. It's her dream. This is about her experience. And that's fine. I don't want it to sound like I'm upset because Trinity's a girl. I, no, I love Trinity from the first movie. I don't like that the, the, the messaging seems to make it that the important thing is, well, it has to be because of the diversity. We have a quota to match. We have Blue Hair Chick, we have Trinity. They have to be the agency because of politics, not necessarily because of the story. And I'm not sure what the story really is, but then again, I'm also not really interested in the story. Because what I am being told is 
They want me to have the same feeling about this movie as I had about the original movie. They want me to feel the same way about scenes that are no longer the same, about characters that are no longer the same, about a message and a storyline that is no longer the same. I'm not going to have those same feelings. I'm going to have different feelings. I'm going to look at this from a different point of view because this is a different movie. It's a different set of circumstances. I love the character of Trinity as she was. Will I love the character of Trinity now? I don't know. I loved the character of Neil then. Will I love him now, now that he's nerfed? Not necessarily. I loved the character of Morpheus because of what he represented, the authority, the strength, the belief. Will I have the same feeling now that he is also nerfed? And his position has been brought down and he's a secondary character, second to blue haired chick. I don't know that I would because I don't know that that character is compelling anymore. So, yes, this is now. And Trinity has taken over Morpheus's dream. Remember, he was talking about in Matrix, uh, I believe it was in Revolutions, when he was talking, oh no, it was Matrix Reloaded, the second movie, when he was talking about his dream and how his dream ended when he's talking about the Nebuchadnezzar being destroyed. And in several parts, he's talking about his vision, his belief. Now that's Trinity's belief. So Morpheus is, has been diminished. Neo and the lack of his uh, breadth of powers and capabilities has been diminished. The faith that both of those individuals had, that Morpheus and Neo had in their abilities and their causes has been nerfed and reduced. And we have in their place, we have Trinity and Blue Hair Trick being emphasized. It's a classic trick of modern political theater that to make your women and your female characters uh, and your non-binary characters to be better is to reduce everyone else, to make the, the, both the heroes around them and the villains weaker to make them less logical, to make them less, so that the women will appear to be more. And we've seen this in many, many movies. Look at the latest versions of, uh, I think it was, uh, it was uh, Genesis, Terminator Genesis. Look at uh, even the one after that, uh, the Terminator movie, the latest Terminator movie, where they brought back Sarah Connor. They got rid of John Connor. Uh, they introduced new and androgynous heroes and uh, a new female lead. Did that make you feel better? Did you enjoy that movie? No. Because they made everyone else dumber and weaker to elevate those women. They, weren't, they didn't have more agency because they were great. They had more agency because everyone else was dumb and weak. It didn't work. And I'm afraid this movie won't work either for that same reason. Because even though there's beautiful cinematography here, even though I think the trailer has been very well put together, even though I can see the elements of a great director here, a great vision, I don't know that we have a story that supports it. And it makes me question it. I am less interested in this movie than I am in the last movie. That's just how I'm feeling. I still know Kung Fu. Yeah, again, in a final callback, a final nostalgia feeling, he still knows Kung Fu, except the Kung Fu isn't the thing that's winning the battle. It's that one single move. That same signature move, that same singular nerfing of his abilities. He's fighting a new Agent Smith. Supposedly and probably an upgrade, a better Agent Smith. But his Kung Fu isn't what's winning. And we're not really seeing his Kung Fu. He's throwing a couple of punches. But he doesn't seem that impressive. And he's copying the move that comes from Trinity. So he, he's not only nerfed, he's relying on the actions of others. Where is that scene? I want to show you that. Uh, because this is Trinity's move. 
So he is down to her moves. He has lost so much agency, so much power, that he's doing Trinity's moves instead of his own. I don't know. I don't find this to be interesting. I don't find this, or rather, I don't find this to be as interesting as they want me to feel it is. Maybe this will be a great film. I hope this will be a great film. I want to see Matrix 4, and I want to see the continuation of the story, and I want to be invested in it, and I want to enjoy seeing Neo again, and Trinity, and Morpheus. Yes, those three characters. Not blue-haired chick. I don't care about her. I don't know anything about her. I'm not interested in her. The new version of Agent Smith, I'm not necessarily interested in. I love Hugo Weaver's version. I'm not sure that I like this one. And I don't know that I like the callbacks. I don't need the callbacks. I need a good story. I don't need the good guys to be nerfed to make other people better. I don't need the bad guy to be unidimensional. Hopefully that's not the case. But maybe you think I'm wrong. Maybe you think I'm different. Maybe you loved the second trailer. Maybe you think the second trailer was better than the first trailer. Tell me if you do. Tell me what you think. And tell me if you're interested in seeing Matrix 4 when it comes out on December 22nd. I look forward to hearing your thoughts.